It's a day of celebration that dates back to the 1600s and has evolved into a global celebration of Irish culture with parades, special food, music, dancing, drinking, and a whole lot of green. Time to say a very happy St. Patrick's Day to the Irish ambassador to Singapore, His Excellency Patrick Bourne. Good morning, Ambassador. Good morning, Michelle. Happy St. Patrick's Day. And may I say you're looking gorgeous and green yourself. Oh, thank you. Now, does green become the new black in Ireland on to, uh, on St. Patrick's Day? You know, clothes, bagels, pancakes, even beer? Pretty much so. Uh, <laughs> even more so in other parts of the world, in, in, in Chicago and Boston and places like that. They dye the rivers green uh, with, of course, environmentally friendly, non-toxic, uh, completely safe uh, dyes and colors and so forth. But uh, it's always been green, I suppose, because St. Patrick's Day, it's, it's, it's the start of spring in many ways as well. So there's lots of green mm. shoots, new growth. So green is a very appropriate color. We love the color of green here on Money FM, of course. So what do you have planned for us here in Singapore to mark the day? Well, it's quiet. Um, this year, again, we're, we're marking, I suppose, our national day in, in a slightly different, difficult uh, context. Uh, the COVID pandemic is still with us. So a lot of the things that we're doing are, are going to be virtual, uh, going to be digital, including our own sort of national day reception later on today. Uh, and a lot of the gatherings will be small, maximum group size of five, obviously, with everyone observing safe management measures and keeping each other safe. But also this year, what's special is that rather than, I suppose, emphasizing the more joyous, the more uh, upbeat uh, aspects of our character and our culture uh, and some of the ones you just talked about there, the drinking and the dancing, which are all very important and they'll all play a big role. We're also this year emphasizing, I suppose, some of the more serious aspects, our humanitarian uh, and democratic values in particular, because we're very conscious of the, the context of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, uh, the, the difficulties that are being faced by the people of Ukraine, and Ireland is very keen to demonstrate solidarity uh, with the people who are facing such hardships and such, such awful aggression there. Speaking of uh, diplomacy and Russia, Russia faces deepening isolation and economic turmoil as the U.S. and other Western nations hit it with an array of sanctions. In terms of keeping dialogue open, Ambassador, what do you think is key to keeping a possible diplomatic solution alive here? Well, I mean, this is a very clear example of aggression by one country against another. Uh, a sovereign independent state has been invaded by Russia. Uh, Russia must be held accountable and pressure must be maintained and heightened and escalate on Russia in order to force Russia to stop its aggression, to stop the war. Uh, I mean, this is this is a very asymmetric war. Uh, it's, it's invasion, it's aggression, uh, and there are, of course, evidence of, of war crimes and crimes against humanity. It must be stopped, and therefore the pressure, the sanctions, the political pressure has to be uh, escalated against Russia. The European Union, uh, with Ireland as a, as a proud and central member thereof, is doing its very best to show a leadership role in this regard and to, um, I suppose, make very clear uh, to the Russian leadership that uh, that this cannot continue, that it must end, and that you know the next important uh, phase we must see must see uh, an end of uh, hostilities, an end of the shelling and the the, the indiscriminate attacks uh, and the, and the, the military offensive that's happening, to make space. Uh, for humanitarian action and to make space for genuine peace talks, which then uh, must lead to implementation of, of whatever is agreed in a, in a, in a, in a very um, clear and careful way. We've had a range of commentators weigh in on possible scenarios. Um, from your point of view, what could happen next? Well, what I hope will happen next is that uh, the Russian leadership comes to its senses. Uh, it realized that this is a, a, a war that it cannot win and that the, the you know, it's just piling up victims, uh, Russian as well as Ukrainian. Uh, there are many, many thousands of Russians died, uh, many, many hundreds uh, of, of, of Ukrainians and more civilians are being killed in Ukraine than, than military. Yesterday saw the first Irish citizen die in this conflict, uh, an Irish journalist called Pierre Karczewski uh, of, of Polish, French, Irish heritage, but very much an Irishman, uh, was killed by uh, a Russian shell uh, on the on the outskirts of Kiev. An awful tragedy. Um, and I join with our president and our government in sending my condolences to his family. But that's just one small example of, of what's happening and, and, and so much uh, death that's occurring there. So what I really hope is that there will be a ceasefire, uh, that the Russians will withdraw, and that there will be a space for uh, peaceful negotiation and settlement of whatever differences exist uh, between Russia and Ukraine rather than a continuation of the military onslaught. If it just continues, it will just lead to, to more and more death, more and more destruction uh, with, with, with no uh, positive outcome in sight. 
If you've just joined us, I'm speaking with His Excellency Ambassador Patrick Bourne, who was appointed ambassador to Singapore 24th August 2018. You've been here in Singapore through difficult times, challenging times. I wonder, what is what are your thoughts on the future of diplomacy in a post-COVID world? What lies ahead for multilateralism in your point of view? Well, um, I think we've, we've come through a period where in, a, in a many ways it could have gone either way. Um, as the COVID pandemic uh, began, uh, you had uh, Donald Trump in the White House withdrawing from, from international multilateralism, may, very much saying America would go its own way. Uh, we, you know, were more often seeing differences uh, uh, in, w amongst European powers in the front pages than unity. Uh, but now, two years later, uh, I mean, you know, I think things have changed. Uh, Joe Biden, a very proud Irishman who will be celebrating St. Patrick's Day himself today, uh, is in the White House, recommitting uh, the United States to uh, play its part in the global effort against climate change, recommitting uh, the United States to the World Health Organization and to, to multilateralism, re-engaging here in Southeast Asia and in the Asia Pacific region. The European Union uh, has uh, just become more and more united, united in, in, the, in the fight against the pandemic and now united in its solidarity with Ukraine and in its show of, of defiance and its demands for accountability to Russia. Uh, so I think all of that uh, in many ways augurs well. Ireland is a very, very strong supporter of multilateralism. We are currently members of the UN Security Council and we've played a very active and leading role in terms of uh, co-sponsoring and driving forward resolutions uh, on the crisis in, in Russia, but also on Afghanistan, uh, on Myanmar, uh, on uh, issues related to, to women and, uh, uh, and conflict, uh, the uh, Iran nuclear uh, issue and so many others. And it it's, you know, we believe, and I think it's it's an absolute truth, an undeniable truth, that the kind of challenges the world is now facing, whether that's climate change, whether that's threats as we're seeing at the moment to the, the rules-based order uh, around politics, security, sovereignty, uh, and the sanctity of, of national borders, or whether it's around trade and economic uh, cooperation uh, uh, to, 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 to guarantee equality and prosperity for the future. These things can only be done and success can only be achieved if we work together uh, in regional blocks and at the global level uh, in the United Nations, the World Trade Organization, the World Health Organization, and those other uh, uh, great institutions of rules-based order that have by and large saved, served us very well for 80 years, that do need you know, reform and, and tinkering from time to time, but are the, the only way forward. We cannot do it alone. We cannot do it uh, uh, acting as, as rivals and competitors. We must collaborate. We hear you're going to be leaving us here in Singapore, Ambassador. You were appointed 2018, and as well as being Ambassador to Singapore, you're responsible for Ireland's relations with Philippines, Timor-Leste, Brunei, Darussalam, but Singapore's losses, Thailand's gains. Your thoughts on, on leaving Singapore? Uh, well, very mixed. Obviously, um, you know, I arrived here in 2018. Uh, 2018, 2019 were wonderfully exciting times. Uh, it was it was a great time for growth. Many new Irish companies came here. We had trade missions. We had high level visits. We had cultural uh, exchanges and programs. Uh, fantastic uh, cooperation, uh, and also with with many of the other countries. Um, I'm no longer now actually responsible for the Philippines because we've opened a new embassy there, which was one of the the exciting projects that we were involved with over, over the uh, over the last few years. Um, and I feel to some extent as if I suppose I've been robbed of of a couple of years because of the um, the COVID pandemic. Uh, yeah. Many of my colleagues often make the, the point that, that diplomacy and being an ambassador is really a contact sport uh, and it's best suited for uh, in-person engagement rather than through screens and uh, and, and, and on digital platforms. Um, so I did uh, try to, uh, to to persuade my authorities that uh, I really needed an extra couple of years in Singapore just to make up for lost ground. But they, they said, no, four years is, is time enough. And there's a queue of people, I think, uh, wanting and waiting to replace me here in, in Singapore. So um, subject to the uh, uh, agreement and approval of the authorities in Bangkok, I'll be moving on to, to Thailand in the middle of the year. I'm very glad to be staying in the region. Uh, I'm very glad to be continuing to uh, represent Ireland and, and try and drive forward Ireland's interests, our business interests, investment, tourism, student interests uh, across the Southeast Asia region, which I think is a really exciting place. I think it's the future. Uh, I, I think it's, 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 it's such an important place. And, uh, you know, I'm so glad to be staying in this region. You've been a great friend to the station, Ambassador. We've loved having you on our shows. I wonder if you can give our listeners a little bit of a parting gift. Oh, I'm going to raise my glass to you as well. Can you give Cheers. us a little parting gift in terms of sectors to invest in Ireland? Are there green shoots? Are there areas that our listeners should be aware of? 
Ireland is a fantastic uh, place to invest. We have, uh, you know, this great young workforce, highly talented, highly qualified, multilingual. Uh, it's a lovely environment. Um, uh, it has a low corporate tax rate, uh, you know, um, which is strong as well, but a great uh, ecosystem of, of technology, of research, of development, innovation. This is why you know, most, if not all, of the world's leading tech firms have their Europe, Middle East, Africa headquarters in Ireland. Most of the world's leading pharmaceutical firms are there and expanding. Uh, uh, in terms of the the areas that we're really uh, interested in now, it's 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 new technologies, advanced technologies. Uh, it's to do with uh, uh, the green. Um, uh, the green ref the green revolution, I suppose, uh, in terms of electronic vehicles, autonomous vehicles, and so forth, artificial intelligence, uh, robotics. Uh, so Ireland is 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 right up there. Nanosciences, you know, you name it. It's it's at the cutting edge, and that's very much the um, uh, our our motto and our slogan going forward. So Ireland at the at the cutting edge, both in terms of of Irish businesses uh, who are eager to find partners in Singapore and across the region, and also as a location for Asian companies, including Singaporean companies, to establish a base uh, in the European Union, where you know we can act as a gateway to that very large and very important European Union single consumer market. A key part of your role here in Singapore has been to see people to people relationships grow. And I wonder if before we let you go, you can share a tip or two on interpersonal relationships and how anybody in the business world uh, can can improve their ability to make people to people relationships grow. Well, uh, in Ireland, it's all about uh, smiling. Uh, it's all about uh, paying a compliment. It's all about being kind and being courteous. Uh, and, uh, you know, showing people that you're you're interested in them showing people that you care um if you do business with or invest with or study in or, or pay a holiday in ireland you realize that the irish people are so extraordinarily friendly they're genuinely engaged they want to know about you they want to know your story they want to know where you come from uh, and they really want to engage it's it's not at all transactional uh, they're not just in it for for the profit or the money or whatever i mean they they really really want to engage and that's why the irish have always been out there in the world we we've, we've emigrated we've made our homes 5000 irish people have made their homes in singapore uh, they're friendly they'll be out there tonight and you'll see them uh, wearing green and uh, in all the irish bars and in all the irish restaurants uh, but also, as I said, you know, that more, uh, I suppose, serious side of it is that, you know, there's a genuineness, there's a warmth there. And the Irish people today will very much have the people of Ukraine on their minds. They'll be thinking of them. They'll be wanting to show solidarity with them. And the way that we express our friendliness, our warmth, our welcome, our tolerance, our humanity, uh, I think, will be the way we show uh, that we care about Ukraine. And that's, I think, a very special way to mark our National Day. It's a very cold studio here in the radio studios, but you always bring a spark of warmth when you are uh, with us here on our shows. We wish you all the best. I've enjoyed every single one of our interviews. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Michelle. It's always been a pleasure to talk to you over the last four years. I hope uh, we'll keep in touch. I am really very grateful for your lovely parting gift of an 89.3 mug, specially designed for the <laughs> Irish ambassador. And I hope you will maintain the tradition of having my successor and future Irish ambassadors come and chat to you on March the 17th. And again, Lyle Aparig Free Hunted. Happy St. Patrick's Day to you. And happy St. Patrick's Day to you and everybody listening in. The Irish ambassador to Singapore, His Excellency Patrick Bourne. Money FM 89.3